Hey noobs, Mr. Frog here. Many people are familiar with the idea of a tower defense game, but have you ever heard of a nest making game? Today, we are going to be taking a look at Suzukuri Dungeon, Karen in the Mountain, a visual novel tower defense hybrid game developed by Karen Project and published by Shivarun. The game is a spin-off from Softhouse Kara and Karen Project's older series, Koi Hime Muso and Suzukuri Dragon. The game is centered around the titular demon queen Karen, who has been sealed away deep inside of a mountain. Thankfully though, Karen had negotiated a resurrection contract with a company who would release the seals containing her after some time. Unfortunately, the contract was originally assigned to a demon folk named Fu, but due to some administration errors, it was misplaced and forgotten for many years. Thankfully though, Fu eventually realizes this error and gets to work in fulfilling the contract. She begins recruiting various workers to set up a dungeon within the mountain with the hopes of attracting adventurers and defeating them to earn an income to further fund the expenses in uncovering and releasing the seals that are containing Karen. The only thing she is missing, however, is someone with the skill to manage the dungeon. That is, until she comes across an adventurer named Kazuto, who loses a bet and must then become the dungeon manager and aid in the resurrection of the demon queen Karen. The intro starts with quite a bit of lore dumping, but once you get acquainted with the story and the characters, it offers a relaxing slice of life experience that mostly revolves around spending time with the other followers of Karen and uncovering their backstories. The writing is well done, with each character having their own unique personalities that are revealed through visual novel story segments in between the tower defense combat sections. While I do think the game has a good balance between gameplay and story segments, a large portion of the game does revolve around visual novel segments, so for those looking for a more straightforward and primarily gameplay focused experience, do take note of this. As for the gameplay itself, you will need to create and manage an increasingly intricate and deadly dungeon. Your dungeon will start out relatively small, with limited options for traps and rooms, but as you progress throughout the game, your dungeon and trap options will grow larger and larger. The gameplay is very similar to what is traditionally classified as a tower defense game, but the game prefers to call itself a suzukuri or nest making game. However you would like to call it though, basically enemies will start at the entrance of your dungeon and randomly proceed through it to different rooms. Each room of your dungeon is basically a tower, where you can either place traps, place characters and minions for combat, or create support rooms that provide other benefits. Furthermore, the game adds a bit of further depth with its dungeon rating system. Adventurers will rate your dungeon after each session on different parameters such as fairness, fun, and challenge. You will not be able to get by with just making a strong and dangerous dungeon, as you will also need to make it a fun and fair challenge as well if you want to receive a high dungeon rating and earn more XP. Aside from just earning a higher rating, you may also decide to tailor your dungeon for other sets of tasks, such as creating several rooms that generate gold, or possibly rooms that boost XP to grind up your units. The game offers a good amount of variety of tools and really lets you have fun and get a bit creative when designing your dungeon. I do wish the game would let you grow your dungeon just a bit more though, as even at max level, it does feel like a few more rooms in the horizontal direction would have been nice to fully utilize some of the other rooms, such as the hallways, to create an even more complex dungeon. Regardless though, there are plenty of rooms to unlock and choose from, and even more units with unique skills that you can assign to your story squad leaders. I do want to warn though that there is a lot of grinding involved in this game if you want to perfect your dungeon. Inevitably during your run, the enemies will eventually become too strong for you to hold back and you will begin to fail. This is not necessarily because you are terrible at the game, but instead that the game is designed to be played through multiple times. Each day you advertise and open up your dungeon to adventurers will reduce the amount of days you have left in your playthrough. You can extend the amount of days you have by leveling up your dungeon, but once you run out, the game will end and proceed to one of several different endings, depending on the choices you made in the game and your progress. You can then create a clear save and restart the game, which will carry over various stats, such as unit levels and a compass system with upgrades, such as increased gold and XP generation during future playthroughs. This means that to fully unlock and see all of the content in the game, it will require several playthroughs to fully unlock. 
This isn't necessarily as bad as it sounds though, as the game offers several tools to speed up this process, such as a skip button that will automatically fast forward through scenes you have already viewed. With this, it doesn't take very long at all to catch back up to where you were before, while also being even stronger with higher leveled units. You can also aim for a different ending during each of your playthroughs, such as unlocking the endings for fully romancing each of the other side heroines, who you will slowly meet as you progress. Most endings are pretty straightforward to unlock, and usually involve spending conversation points to talk with one of the girls in between combat sections. You get one point a day and can hold up to five at a time. Each of the girls will have additional requirements for each of their scenes as well, such as having a high enough dungeon rating or enough dungeon variety to view them. Once you've completed all of their scenes, you can then progress to their ending and then create another save file to restart the game with. It's a surprisingly well-crafted system that does help keep each playthrough from feeling overly repetitive or monotonous, but it does require quite a bit of grinding to make it to the true end. The grind is worth it though, as along the way you will experience the real content of this game, the H content. The H content in Suzukuri admittedly starts off at a rather slow pace, but picks up a lot more once you begin to get a bit further in the game. There are a few H scenes that can be unlocked while just progressing through the main story, but the majority of the H scenes will be unlocked while spending points talking to the various girls in the game. Each girl will have several of their own scenes that can be unlocked at various points as you get to know them better. The scenes are primarily static HCGs, but each scene will have several CGs each that progress along with the scene. The CGs are fantastically illustrated with a lot of detail and a good amount of variation in themes as well. In addition, with the large and diverse cast of heroines in the game, there should be a little bit of something to appeal to all tastes here. While there's a bit of a slow buildup to the age content at first, once it gets going it really delivers. Overall, Suzukuri offers a good balance between lighthearted slice of life story segments and strategic tower defense gameplay. While occasionally a bit repetitive, it provides a unique and interesting take on the tower defense genre. In addition, with its charming and well-written character cast and high-quality illustration artwork, make it a game well worth checking out. With that being said, Mr. Frog awards this game a strong Mr. Frog sip. Have you played this game? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And if you'd like to see more H-game content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to check out the Mr. Frog stream over on Twitch. Later, noobs.